Okay, what we're going to talk about today is a spring clutch, a one-way spring clutch that um, came across when I was doing the video for the 1956 toy Z-Man the Brain. Uh, let's go to here. This is the um, the beginning of the patent applications for Z-Man the Brain. The patent was a granted a year after it was already being sold in stores and uh, the full patent is here I put this up a long long time ago I'll put a link to it I mean you can read the whole thing <clears throat> but uh, after I did the video for the Z-Man I was mainly in that video focusing on the fact that it was the first electronically programmable toy and was also one of the first toys to use a printed circuit board I didn't want to delve much deeper in that video because a lot of people that are watching that might not be interested in some of the mechanics. But what I found when I was reading the full patent on it on the mechanics, and we'll, we'll talk about this closer, but clear down here in the front drive, see there's a motor for each of the front wheels. And there's a little spring, number 22, and a little spring, number 23, if you bring up the patent and look at it. It'll tell you all about that. Long and short of it is, is when this toy is operating only one of these motors is running at a time so either the left motor is running or the right motor is running and the one of the rear wheels turns a gear which runs the mechanical sequencer and the mechanical sequencers has the 20 electric switches and the switches are what tell which motor is going to be on or off well let's just say if this motor was on it would kick the whole front end to the left so the car would be moving and turning to the left but if this wheel which is connected to this motor was locked to that motor it would be off that would work like a, a stop the car wouldn't be able to move it would just bind up it couldn't go anywhere so this has to be able to freewheel when something else is pushing it forward but it has to be able to grab when that motor is running and what they used in there is a spiral spring clutch so I found that very interesting and decided I wanted to experiment with it on myself. And if you want to watch that video on the Z-Man, I'll put a link down below showing the, uh, the toy in operation. But the long and the short of it, let's see, I have uh, some images. Here's an example. This is uh, like, have you ever seen the coil things that you can put around your wrist that hold your keys or something? Sometimes you'll see them, well... You can buy them online. They've been around a long time. But in this case, this isn't a metal spring, obviously. It's some sort of modern polymer that's very flexible. It doesn't feel like silicone, so it's some other flexible thing. It's got about a six millimeter inside hole. This uh, copper or brass, whichever it is, tube is about six. You can't really just push it in, but if you turn it the right direction, of course, it goes in efforts just totally free and spins in there free because when you're turning it this way you're basically opening the coils making them larger goes in no problem but now if you try to turn it the other direction it instantly locks and grabs transfers power that way this way spins free this way it grabs so I decided I would want to try this to see if it would work in an actual toy so rather than designing something from all the way up I took the uh, base design, the, the legs and the lower base from a Rotomatic 3D printed toy that I did a long time ago. Let's uh, close this and look for... Um, oh, here's a picture of what the wristband thing, coil band things, if you go to buy them online, kind of look like. Basically, they just expand out and it has a key ring where you can put your keys on. I guess it's like if you're at an amusement park or, or doing some sort of activity where you wanted to keep your keys with you, but you didn't want to lose them. I guess it could be anything. It could be swimming, volleyball, whatever. The point is you can put them on your wrist and not lose them. Okay, let's go back. So at any rate, I started with files that already existed. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Basically, the legs are printed in legs-feet combination two parts. You have some ratchet wheels. They have rubber O-rings on them. You glue the halves together. This ends up making um, the feet assemblies. Then there's a, a plate that the legs go up through the slots, and these bottom pieces glue on the bottom to constrain the legs. Now the legs can move freely within the slots. I've kind of covered this in other videos. Maybe I'll put a link to the Roto Robot uh, in case you want to see that too. 
So here's a bottom view of it with the caps on. You can see the ratchet wheels and everything. <coughs> Here we are on the top. Now what's going to happen is we're going <coughs> to glue some uh, cam guides on each one of these legs and there's a cam that drops in here so that I can get a vertical drive to cause a, a walking action. So here are the cam guides in. It's a dual cam. It has an upper lobe and a lower lobe. This is the uh, this little piece right here is just stuck right onto a 3D printed 6 millimeter diameter. This piece is a 3D printed one that goes inside and has a D cut out to fit um, one of these battery motors because they have a, a D shaped shaft on them. And just another view of it. Here are the parts are laid out so you can see we've got the leg assembly just has a stub. Maybe I can zoom in on that for you. How's that? Better? Little stub there. A little piece of the coil that we just talked about. Here's the little insert with its six millimeter stub that goes in and this half is going to fit into the motor. Printed a motor mount that the motor screws to and the mount fits into the base. That way you can transfer the power to the lower walking part. And I don't think we need to see, well, the only other picture up there is the one where it's uh, sitting together. <clears throat> but we don't need to look at that because we, we have it sitting right, right here. Let's get it in frame. So more or less in frame. So you can see the, this just sits on there. In fact, the whole thing can, in this case, I can lift the whole thing off. Oops. Doing a lousy job of lining it back up. There we go. So it's, now it's back on. So, when the motor runs in, in one direction, it's going to slip. It shouldn't walk. And when it runs in the other direction, it should grab and should walk. And what that allows you to do by controlling the direction of your motor is you can perform two functions. This upper shaft that's coming out of here I could use to drive something else. Guns, spinning heads, spinning body, noise effect, who knows what, arms moving, maybe the whole body tipping. I haven't thought through what I want to do with the other half of it yet, or maybe rotating pictures in the chest that are illuminated. You could do all kinds of things with that. And by controlling that you could make the robot walk or stop you could have this upper function happen all the time, whether it's walking or stopping, or you could have put another clutch on this upper part right here and only have the upper part turn on when it reverses. So it's either walking or performing some other function up here. You can go either way. So right now I've got this uh, little battery pack. We'll just use this and a couple of alligators so I can easily attach the power to the uh, control leads. And I think, let's see, maybe I should put a piece of tape so you can see when that upper shaft is spinning. Let's put a little flag on this so that you'll know when the motor is running and when it's, when it's not running. Okay, there's a little flag. So now you can see the motor is running, but the, it's not walking. Now I'm going to reverse the motor direction. And now the power is transferred. Let's see if we can turn that maybe. This isn't glued down, obviously. It would work better if that was secured. Now we'll go back the other way. But a, a two button remote or an electronic remote system to uh, reverse the motor. Were very common features in, uh, in vintage toys to get two functions from a single motor that you controlled. You can all, they always had lots of toys that had two functions from a single motor that used a cam to control when it happened. But this one allowed more play value because you you were controlling which of the functions is happening. So I was very surprised to see that it's very easy to make and it works really well. I'm sure the metal spring because in Z-Man that toy is 65 years old now, 66 years old now. 
That metal spring still works perfectly. It slips in the one direction and grabs like a mother in the other direction. Who knows how long these uh, modern, flexible, man-made polymers would last. I don't know. Would they break down over 60 years or would they still work? Couldn't say. It was just that finding uh, pliable, soft pliable uh, com springs, not compression springs, but pull type springs, isn't easy. All the ones I could find were really stiff. So the only thing I could find that was pliable and gave was these wrist things. Or this, at least the first thing that popped into my mind. I went, oh, I, I think I've got an idea for something that might work. So this may not last as long as the OZ man, since he's still going strong because it's metal on metal. But this is an easy way to play with the concept of a one-way spring clutch.